one of the 2022 high school football season is in the books. Now we turn our attention to week two. Welcome in everybody to the Shelby County High School Football Show. And we're out here at Thompson High School as we get you geared up for what's going to be another action-packed Friday night and Saturday night here across Shelby County this upcoming week. And with week one now behind us, this is the final week before region play kicks off. So plenty to still touch up there for many of the teams across Shelby County. Some teams started with success, had a win in game one. Some still looking to perfect some things, didn't pick up a win in that opener, but did see some positive signs going into week two. And now it's about building off of that and getting ready for what's ahead as region play does loom the week after this. And that's where you really start the season. That's where your playoff uh, chances begin and will be determined here at the end of the season. So a big week this coming uh, Friday night and Saturday night. We've got a big one that's going to take place out here at Thompson High School Warrior Stadium on ESPNU Saturday night at 8 o'clock. The Warriors will play host to Lipscomb Academy. That's going to be our game of the week. We're going to talk about that one extensively here to kick off the show in just a few minutes. And then we've got several others. Even though that one's televised, it's going to be on ESPNU, an exciting matchup between two defending state champions. There's plenty more excitement across Shelby County in week two of the high school football season as well. Several in-county matchups going to take place. We're going to talk about all of those, and we're going to talk about it all on this week's show. And then at the end, as we do every year, it's back this year, the SCR Stars of the Week. We talk about the best performers from week one of the season across Shelby County and the impact that they had in helping their teams out during that opener. But we're going to start right here with our game of the week to kick off the 2022 edition of the Shelby County High School football show, and that's going to be the Thompson Warriors hosting Lipscomb Academy in a big matchup on ESPNU this Saturday night. A little bit of a rainy and dreary Sunday afternoon out here at Warrior Stadium, but let me tell you, Come this Saturday night, this place is going to be rocking. Those stands behind me, they're going to be loaded with Thompson fans. And yes, Thompson did start 0-1 this season. They lose their opener last week. Uh, they fall 38-7 to to Buford. But there's a lot of team, a lot of people across the state already kind of drawing up some concern there because of what they saw in that game. And I know this coaching staff is going to be working on some of those concerns. But at the same time, one, you're taking on a team that was ranked inside the top five nationally uh, by many different polls coming into the season. But in addition to that, you played an eighth grade quarterback for the majority of the second half in that game and a little bit in the first half as well, going up against one of the most difficult defenses in the country. But guess what? Thompson's defense right there with them. Thompson played extremely well on the defensive side of the football last week in that 38-7 to loss. And you may say, well, 38 points, how did the defense play well? Well, you look at what the offense did, a couple of pick sixes, there was a kickoff return for a touchdown. That makes up 21 of the 38 right there. Uh, but beyond that, Thompson's defense played lights out, really only gave up about 10 of the points in that game. And that's what this team has to build off of. One, the offense has to know that the defense is going to be there to back them up each and every week. It's just a matter of then getting some points on the board, not turning the ball over and protecting. If they can protect the football, they're going to be in just about every game, if not win every game the rest of the way. And for the defense, you build off of that confidence. What you were able to do against one of the best teams in the country, it's not going to get much more difficult than that the rest of the way. So you build off of what you were able to do defensively this past week, and you carry that into this game against Lipscomb Academy. Now, you look at this matchup on paper, two very good teams led by two very good uh, head football coaches. Obviously, Mark Freeman right here at Thompson High School has really turned this program into uh, not only a state power, but one of the best teams in the country the last several years. And then you look over on the other side at Lipscomb Academy and Trent Dilfer, former ESPN analyst and NFL quarterback uh, player as well there, uh, leading Lipscomb Academy. So, uh, a lot of excitement around this matchup, going to be televised on ESPNU, and you look at what Lipscomb did in their opener, competing also in the Freedom Bowl, which is what Thompson did, uh, Thompson taking on Buford, well, uh, guess what, Lipscomb took on the host of the Freedom Bowl there, Milton uh, team out of Georgia. So both of these teams have played out-of-state opponents in week one, now they get another out-of-state opponent in week two, Milton 
uh, or I'm sorry, Lipscomb picked up an 18 to six victory against Milton in that opener. So obviously the defense playing well there at Lipscomb as well. The offense struggled at times, however. So it's a similar storyline going into this matchup. You've got two teams that were dynamite on the defensive side of the football last year, and guess what? They're going to be dynamite on that side of the football again this year. So this game likely going to come down to who can protect the ball throughout and not turn it over. And we saw Thompson struggle with that last week. Well, guess what? They've got an extra day of preparation this week. This is a coaching staff that knows how to make these kind of adjustments. you got a team right now that's being doubted a little bit, which they haven't been in a couple or several years now. Uh, and, and so you put that – on top of a defense that's already playing well, an offense that's been you know, traditionally successful the last five, six years, this is a motivated team, which is a scary thought going in to this matchup. Two very talented teams, two very physical teams and well-coached football teams, but Thompson's defense, one of the best in the country, I think shows up again for a second week in a row. I think plays even better than they did last week against Buford. And then you look at the offense, I think there's going to be drastic improvement from what we saw a week ago. I think there's going to be a little bit more consistency uh, and definitely uh, an emphasis throughout this week at practice on protecting the football because that's going to be the number one key. If they can protect the football this week, they likely win this football game. So that's the biggest concern. You come out When you come out to this game on Saturday night, the big thing you've got to watch for, one, what's going to be happening at quarterback. Obviously, Zach Sims was the guy expected to come in, make some big-time plays this year as a junior. Uh, played a little bit, uh, played the majority of the first half of that game. Struggled at times. Then we saw eighth grader Trent Seaburn come in in the second half. He did lead the only touchdown drive of the game for the Warriors, but still a lot to grow uh, and learn, especially with that arm strength as an eighth grader. He is going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the country over the next four or five years, but still a lot to do and develop and learn at the position. So what's going to be key when you come out to watch this game? Who takes the field as the starting quarterback? One, but two, do they take command of the offense and protect the football? They've got to have confidence and they've got to be able to protect the football. I think you're going to see that transition no matter what this week. Last week eased into it against a very very, very good football team this week. Going to be ready to roll on national television. They're going to be ready to make a statement. Expect the offense to improve and the defense to continue to show that it's one of the best in the country. It's going to be a lot of fun out here on Saturday night. I'll be here with that one, uh, and, and I can't wait to see how it unfolds. Two teams, one sitting at 1-0. Thompson looking to bounce back before they jump in, obviously, to that gauntlet of Class 7A Region 3. But many starting to doubt them. Better be careful. This is a team that can very easily reel off a win in every game the rest of the way and can still very easily win a state championship this year. Just going to take a little bit more work to get that offense around to where it needs to be. So going to be a lot of fun to see uh, that motivation kind of pay off and play out right here on this football field Saturday night. Well, that takes care of the big game of the week taking place out here at Thompson High School, but we've got eight other matchups, and of those eight matchups, four of them are going to feature county battles as uh, Shelby County teams will be playing each other in four games this Friday night. So going to be a busy Friday night, one that's going to be a lot of fun with some good rivalries. We're going to start with Oak Mountain hosting the Pelham Panthers, and these two teams uh, enter in different situations. Oak Mountain starts 1-0. They beat Northridge 23-14 to last Friday night. Uh, and then you look at the Pelham Panthers, a team that jumped out to a 3 to nothing lead uh, in their battle against uh, Jackson Olin. First game under head coach Mike Vickery. They end up losing that one 14-10. to Fell behind 14-3, to but bounced back. Made it a four-point game there in the fourth quarter. Just ultimately couldn't find that one last play that they needed. Had chances again down the stretch, but just couldn't make that play on offense that they needed. And that's where they're going to need to see that growth kind of develop uh, going into week two of the season. And a big matchup against Oak Mountain. And this is a key game for both of these teams looking to kind of build some confidence around the offensive side of the football. Both have a lot of talent back on the defensive side. As long as they can stay healthy, that's going to be the key. These defenses are very, very talented this year, and we saw that in week one. Both gave up 14 points defensively uh, to start the season. I expect that to be a trend throughout the year. These are two very talented defenses, but the question mark surrounding both, how successful can their offense be throughout the season? Because both replacing 
uh, major starting quarterbacks. Obviously, Evan Smith at Oak Mountain, a four-year starter. And then you look at Pelham, Will Lankford, la the last two years, he's been the starter over at Pelham. So multi-year starters running the offense that are now gone, and you're early in the season looking to form that next identity. So what we saw successful last week for the Eagles – Trey Vassell, Davion Foster, both successful in running the football. Vassell went over 100 yards, had two touchdowns in that game. That could be the key component in this matchup. But traditionally, these are two teams that are going to play physical, tight. Uh, it's going to be a close football game. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit different style. Vickery come, has come in and changed a little bit of what Pelham's doing, but this is a team that can easily spread the ball out with what they have athlete-wise. It's just a matter of finding the quarterback to be able to make a play and get it out to those athletes. Whereas Oak Mountain, they're going to line up right now, it looks like, and they're going to be a physical team that wants to pound the ball, wear down defenses, and take advantage of that in the second half. Uh, this past week, they struggled a little bit more in the second half, uh, some injuries up front on the defensive line, uh, but ultimately bounced back. They hold on. They win that one 23-14. to I think we're going to see something similar this week. I think you've got two defenses. It's going to be a low-scoring game for a while, but ultimately that run game of Oak Mountain at the end of the night I think is the difference here uh, and should be able to propel them to a 2-0 and start. But if Pelham does find that answer at quarterback, if they do end up making some more plays, uh, down the stretch. This is a physical defense, one that's going to be tough to score on. Expect Pelham to have a great chance to pull off this win against a 7A team, gain some confidence going into a very difficult region there in Class 6A. That takes us to another big matchup between a 6A and 7A team locally as the Spain Park Jaguars travel, travel just a couple miles down the road to take on the Briarwood Lions, a game that's been played the last few years. And last year, and coming into this season, you would have expected Briarwood to be a, a decent favorite going into this game. You look at what happened last year. Briarwood wins that one 42-8. to The offense just had its way. Obviously, returning this year, five-star quarterback Christopher Vizina to lead the Lions on the offensive side of the ball, where Spain Park, they've hit a transition as well this season with a new head coach, Tim Vakakis. Came over from Jackson Olin in week one. Boy, did Spain Park look the part, especially on defense. This is a team that Number one goal coming into the season, be more physical and more talented on the defensive side of the football because the talent was there last year for Spain Park on that side of the ball. But one, they were on the field 90% of the game. And two, they just never played up to that talent. This year, week one, they were still on the field a lot because the offense didn't have a lot of success early in that game. Uh, but they still lived up to what they were supposed to do and what they preached coming into the season, which was to improve and play up to their capability. Uh, week one, they pick up a 14-10 to win against the Calera Eagles, a game that they trailed 7 to nothing, tied late in the first quarter, 7-7, uh, to uh, and then ultimately the next two and a half quarters, very quiet. Neither team could do much offensively. That changed with about four minutes to go as Kalira went on a nice drive, had first and goal from the six. Ultimately, a penalty fumbled snap pushed them back. They had to kick a field goal, go up 10-7, to seven, but Spain Park, with no offense since the first quarter, answered in a big way with several big plays on their final drive. And uh, with about 25 seconds left, Evan Smallwood scores on a seven-yard touchdown run, gives Spain Park a 14-10 to 10 victory. But without their defense playing as well as they did, uh, that, they don't win that football game. Uh, that was the ultimate difference at the end of the night is that their defense made plays and kept them in the game. Briarwood, on the other hand, like I said, led by Vizina, entered that game against Clay Chalkville, the defending 6A state champions, looking to make a, uh, set, a, set a tone early in the season and put out a message that they're going to be a team that can compete for a state championship after losing to Clay Chalkville in the playoffs last year uh, in a 56-21 to game. But week one, still trying to find that identity. They lose that game 48 to nothing to Clay Chalkville, a top five battle to me, what it shows is that Clay Chalkville, once again, going to be the legit contender there in the 6A classification. But for Briarwood, it still shows, one, defense has got some improvements to make. They replace a ton of talent on that side of the football. Uh, but two, the offense in need of some receivers to step up. They not only lose their top running back in Luke Rebels, but lose all of their production at the receiver position from last year. So now you've got a five-star quarterback who can make any throw on the field, who can use his legs, but... All defenses are going to do until there is somebody else who steps up is they're going to crowd the box and they're going to 
basically bring everybody at Vizina and force him into some uncomfortable situations. Uh, so this week, got to find that person who's going to step up, especially when you've got a defensive line in Spain Park that just b- shut down Kalira up front in the trenches. Kalira could not run the football. Uh, they had one big pass play early and then had several on their final drive of the game. But beyond that, Spain Park, their defensive line, their front seven played extremely well in that football game. So they're going to have to find ways, Briarwood is, to be able to protect Vizina, and somebody's going to have to become a threat for him to throw the football or somebody's going to have to step up and be able to become another threat running the football. So right now that's the key components going into this matchup. I think you're going to see two defenses play extremely well, whereas you've got two offenses still trying to find their uh, motivation and what's going to make them go early in the season. So it should be another really good matchup here. I expect a low-scoring physical battle Uh, And whoever can find that offense late in this game, kind of like Spain Park did last week, ultimately uh, probably going to come out on top in this football game. But still a lot to be seen from both of these teams. Who's going to step up on offense particularly for both of them? And can Briarwood's defense bounce back and be what we're accustomed to seeing here in week uh, week two? Should be a fantastic battle between these two teams. Historically, the three before last year were extremely tight. Uh, I expect that to be the case again this year. I think we're going to see a fun one. First-year head coach Tim Vakakis looking to continue to build momentum after they won their opener last year, went on to lose every game until the the very end of the season. So now you look at that this season, going to have to find a way in week two to continue to show some confidence, whereas Briarwood looking to build that momentum before heading into a challenging region. It's going to be a lot of fun out there at Briarwood Christian School as these two teams battle it out to see who can set that tone, make a statement early in the season. Well, on the other end of that Spain Park game last week, the Kalira Eagles came out and manned their defense play extremely well. I knew it was going to be a talented group coming into the season, but what this team did in that opener against a very physical 7A team, uh, there was probably a little bit more depth at Spain Park. The size of the Jags this year also looked good, but Kalira came out and they weren't scared of the defensive side of the football. That is a defense that stepped up, answered the bell, uh, and, and played extremely well throughout that football game. Really, at the line of scrimmage, uh, was as good as I've seen, uh, especially at the 6A level the last couple of years, and that's something they're going to carry with them the rest of the way. Now, Spain Park, there wasn't much of a throwing threat there, so they were able to defensively for Kalira kind of hone in on the line, stop the run game, and make that the main focus. And now you go into a game this week where you're facing a Chelsea team that scored just six points in their opener uh, against Tolina in a 28-6 to loss. Uh, and you've also got an offense that new quarterback there for the Chelsea Hornets, a sophomore, didn't get to do a ton throwing the football in week one. Uh, they do have running back Emerson Russell back and a couple of others, uh, but the offensive line is young, the defensive line also young. Uh, so trying to find those leaders to step up for Chelsea is going to be key going into this matchup. But when you look at what the did, what uh, Chelsea's offense did last week to struggle, and now they've got to go up against this clear defense, which uh, excels in coverage, excels up front uh, at pressuring the quarterback, stopping the run. It's hard to see Chelsea getting enough points in this game to be able to pull away. Now, what I will say is that, one, Kalira struggled offensively last week against a 7A opponent, albeit, uh, but outside of play one that went 85 yards uh, to Braylon Farrington there on the first play of the game, uh, it was silent pretty much the rest of the way until their final drive when they were finally able to get some things clicking. Uh, But just need some more confidence from Preston Stokes. He's got a ton of talent, was a great quarterback last year. So getting that confidence back from him in year two as a returning starter uh, and finding some holes in the offensive line, that's going to be key for the Kalira Eagles. They've got to be able to find those holes blocking to be able to reel off some big runs because they've got some success there at the running back position with Daniel Brown back as well. So for Kalira, that's going to be the big key. Can their offense kind of find – uh, some some movement there, hit some down downfield plays, open up some uh, some holes there for the run game. But for the Chelsea Hornets, they showed improvement in their game. That first half, they really struggled last week against Helena. They were able to, in the second half, however, start to show some positive things and ultimately 7-6 uh, to six game in that second half. 
so you saw some impro- improvement. Sophomore quarterback Carter Dotson started showing some confidence in throwing the football. They found a little bit more, uh, some more seams there running the football, and the defense played really well. Uh, really, after the first quarter, the defense uh, answered the call. They've got a lot of camaraderie on that side of the ball. Played extremely well the rest of the way after the first quarter where they gave up 14 points. So defense made their improvements. I think they'll be in good shape going into this game. Offense going to continue to get better. But as we know what lies ahead, Class 7A Region 3, it's going to be a lot different than these first two opponents in Helena and Calera. As talented as both of those teams are, uh, they've got to find something in a hurry, Chelsea does, and they've got to be able to do it this week to show that they can do it against those 7A Region 3 teams. So a big game between these two, both looking to bounce back from season opening losses. Calera, a team that could battle for the region championship this year, really needs to gain some confidence, especially on the offensive side, because if they do that with the defense that they have, this is going to be a very dangerous football team, while Chelsea just overall looking to get some confidence with some young players under a first-year head coach. This is not something that's a surprise Um, I expect them to continue to improve throughout the year. Head coach Todd Cassidy doing a great job of getting his guys to buy in and believe and work hard. This is going to be a physical team, one that's not going to uh, go down without lack of effort throughout the season. And so that's what you've got to see again this week is that continued fight uh, to push forward and, and show what you're capable of. So Regardless of what happens, this is a very important game for confidence reasons. I think we're going to see that with the effort in this county battle between Collier and Chelsea. Well, for the fourth consecutive year, the Helena Huskies, they jump out to a 1-0 start under head coach Richie Busby. Uh, they win 28-6 to against Chelsea, and it was exactly what we expected coming into the season, a team that answered early with the ground game and used that to wear down Chelsea throughout the football game, played with their defense that's talented seemingly year in and year out as well. Uh, But you look at the way this game started, an 85-yard kick return down inside the 10-yard line, a penalty on top of that, set up first and goal from the two-yard line and one play into that drive. Jordan Washington, who returned the kick 85 yards, plunged it in for his first touchdown of the season, coming off a 1,600-plus yard rushing season a year ago. He went on to have two touchdowns in the first quarter, helped Helena jump up. 14 to nothing in that first quarter with those two touchdowns. Ultimately, a 21 to nothing game at the half, then a 7 to 6 game in the second half as they go on to win that one 28 to 6. Now, I will say, defense looked great. The offense running the football looked great, but still need that extra dynamic throwing the football, and they may not need it this week. Taking on Buckhorn, uh, Buckhorn sitting at 1 and 0 as well after a win in week one. Uh, uh, 27 to 14 win against Madison, uh, Madison County out of, of the 4A classification. But eventually, Helena's going to have to be able to throw the football against better teams because teams are going to load the box and try to stop them running the football and force them to make some downfield throws. They did show a little bit of positivity on that side of the ball, a touchdown pass uh, there uh, as well. So you see that confidence starting to build there. Eventually, it's going to have to be a good uh, one two punch there between. Uh, the the passing game and the rushing attack. But right now, you've got A.J. Horstead, you've got Jordan Washington, uh, you've got more beyond that as well. The depth at running back, the offensive line, the physical tone that this team likes to set, right now they're, they're prime. They're in prime shape to do exactly what Helena football has done the last several years, winning a region championship last year, doing the exact same thing, finishing in the top two of the region standings the last three years doing it, and winning two of the last three region champions uh, championships. Expect them to continue to come out, do that this week against Buckhorn. I think that's the difference with the way they're playing early in the season. Defense is going to be ahead of the offense most of the time, uh, so defense should play well against Buckhorn. Offense should be able to wear down uh, Buckhorn as well. I expect Helena to improve to 2-0, and which is going to be important because this region much more difficult this year. Well, that takes us to one of the oldest rivalries in Shelby County, the Wildcats of Shelby County traveling to Montevallo this Friday night, a game that a rivalry that was renewed a few years ago and has led to some exciting battles the last several years, and I expect nothing different this season. Obviously, Blake Bourne back leading the Montevallo Bulldogs has done a great job there as the head coach. Zeb Ellison now going into year two 
at Shelby County. And last year, we saw what they did two years ago, made the playoffs, ended that 10-year playoff drought. Last year, they not only make it to the playoffs, uh, but finish as the number two team in the region standings to get home field advantage in the first round. So we're seeing a lot of positive results out of both of these head coaches, uh, which has really renewed life to this rivalry, two graduates of these particular schools as well, leading the teams. Uh, so just a lot of excitement around this rivalry matchup. And uh, obviously we saw what happened last week for the Shelby County Wildcats, a 14-7 to win against West Blockton. Very physical tone set on the offensive side of the football. They played well on the defensive side as well. Another physical season already that we're seeing for them. Bradley Horton uh, back at the linebacker position as one of the leading tacklers last season. Uh, played extremely well in the opener, as did many others on the defensive side of the ball. But the offense, uh, even though it's just 14 points to jump out uh, to a 7 to nothing lead early in that game, knew their defense could protect that lead. And then in the fourth quarter, early able to go on really what was a clinching touchdown drive to go up 14 to nothing. Uh, the defense didn't lose the shutout until the final couple of minutes as they go on to win that one 14-7. to But you look at this offense, Carter Sheehan had an impressive game as a senior. But beyond that, Devin Alexander and Ryan Sipes, both young playmakers. Uh, Alexander, who scored his first touchdown as a Shelby County Wildcat. And then you look beyond that at what Sipes was able to do at the quarterback position as a young guy as well. Two guys with a bright future that are really going to have to step up early in their careers and help lead this offense. And they did that in week one of the season en route to that 14-7 to victory. You look at that, and that gives a very young team a lot of confidence following a week one win, whereas last year they didn't play in week one. And they went into this game against Montevallo, played well at times. It was a tight game for a while, but they ultimately went on to lose that football game uh, late as Montevallo was able to pull away. This year, however, Montevallo started 1-0 a season ago. This year, Montevallo has the bye week, didn't play in week one. Shelby County, they did get that win in week one. So it's a little bit of a role reversal this season. We'll see if that is any th indication of what's going to happen on Friday night. I do think that that benefits the Wildcats as they're able to get some young playmakers, some confidence, and a win under their belt, whereas Montevallo also going to have some young talent replacing some players and they're not going to have that game experience yet. So that could be a factor in this game. I think it was a season ago, and I think it will be again this year. Now you look at what Montevallo's got to replace. The quarterback position going to be key. Uh, starter this year does have some experience from last year uh, in, in replacement, but you look beyond that, the receiver position is really going to be what's key this season because of all the talent they have there. They're going to have to take some shots down the field and make big plays in the passing game because they lose Joseph Anderson, one of the best running backs in the state a season ago, and set the single season rushing record in Shelby County uh, in a special year there for the Bulldogs. So that's going to be the key this season. They'll have plenty of athletes as they always do. Shelby County going to be physical. So which one's going to win out in that battle of athleticism and physicality? Uh, and, and I think it's going to be an entertaining football game as it usually is when these two meet on the football field. But I think the difference is that unknown from Montevallo. Uh, Shelby County probably could have played a little bit better at times in their opener, and they'll build off of that. But Montevallo going to have to do that on the fly if they want to win in week one uh, for them against the Shelby County Wildcats. Nonetheless, one of the greatest and richest tradition rivalries in this county. I expect it to be a lot of fun when they get together this Friday night, as it always is, going to be a physical battle between these two football teams who want to get off two successful starts ahead of the rest of the season. Well, the Vincent Yellow Jackets looked about as advertised to me, a team that returned just about everybody on their football team this season, and they jump out of the gate with a 41-26 to victory against 1A Ragland in the opener last week. And you look at what they did successfully, one, they finished the football game. That's the biggest thing that they were able to do, a 27-26 to game against a team, and while albeit a 1A team, uh, as Vincent's a 2A team, uh, 
that is a team in Raglan that was nine and three a season ago. is very has a very successful program at the one A level. So for Vincent to come out, it's a twenty seven to twenty six game in the third quarter, and then they're able to finish that football game with fifteen unanswered points. That's huge for their confidence and showing that they can do it late in a football game as they played extremely well in that opener. So much talent back on both sides of the ball, and they're playing all over the field uh, on both sides of the ball this year. You've got multiple guys that are going to have to play two ways, and so for them to have that experience back and know what that's like already and to jump out to a 1-0 and start, that's a huge key for the Yellow Jackets this season. We saw what they were able to do uh, last week, and that was you look at what they lost coming into this season. The one key position they were looking to replace was Jamari Lawson at the running back position, and guess what? Vincent came out and ran for 200-plus yards in their week one win. So that's huge because their passing game is going to be dynamic as well this season and drastically improved from what it has been in the past. And while it was good last year, you've got a returning starting quarterback in Blake Ollams, and you've got some of your best athletes back at the receiver position. So to see that running game kind of take off in week one is a huge boost to this team as a whole because that was really the only question mark surrounding them coming into the season. And now they get Winterboro sitting at 0-1, also a 1A team. But you look back to this game last year, it was the opener for these two teams, and Vincent lost that game 18-16, to a game where they squandered away opportunity after opportunity and ultimately lost 18 to 16 head to head later that game was forfeited in Vincent's favor because of an ineligible player by Winterboro but now this year they want to prove it on the field Vincent does that they are the better team and not have to rely on a forfeit to pick up a win uh, against this opponent because you look at last year like I said they squandered away opportunities they knew they felt uh, they were the better team Looking back at the end of that game, uh, they just – so many missed opportunities. So this year they want to go out and prove a point. And I think with what they have back, with Winterboro sitting at 0-1, you've got Vincent confident, you've got so much talent back there. And the one key question coming in, the running game showed success in week one. Ultimately, I think that's a huge bonus for this team, makes all the difference in the world. And I think that they're going to come out and jump out to a 2-0 and start with a great showing – uh, this week against Winterboro as they look to get some redemption there on the road this season. So going to be a lot of fun to see if Vincent can continue to prove themselves. A lot to prove throughout the season. They have the talent. Now's where they have to go into those games believing they can win, showing that confidence of coming out on top like they're capable of. I think they do that this week against Winterboro. Well, now we jump down to the AISA and ACSC, and all three teams are going to be in action there, and two of them going to battle it out against each other as the Cornerstone Chargers are going to host the Coosa Valley Academy Rebels in what's going to be a big early season matchup because it should be very telling for what's going to be ahead for both of these football teams. You look at what happened in this game a season ago. Coosa Valley won 34-6, to and that was a Coosa Valley offense that was struggling last year. The defense was the highlight for the Rebels a season ago, so that's six points last year given up, not a surprise. In week one this year, however, Cornerstone jumps out to a 1-0 record. They beat Snook 38-20, to a huge game for Zeke Adams on both sides of the ball. And then you look at what uh, Coosa Valley did, a late addition to the schedule. Uh, they end up playing Abbeville Christian, fall in that game 20 to nothing. So it's hard to tell really where they are at this point in the season. Uh, Snook last year was not a very good football team, so also hard to tell uh, if Cornerstone is going to be able to do that kind of success or have that kind of success consistently throughout the season, uh, which makes this game extremely important for both of these teams. Coosa Valley needs to come out. Last year struggled offensively. They've got to find something on that side of the ball early in the season this year to show that it's going to be a different season on the offensive side of the football. Cornerstone, Zeke Adams did just about everything he could possibly do to help Cornerstone win that game a week ago. Expect him to have another big night in this game. I don't see this one being a 34-6 to game in favor of Coosa Valley again, I think it's going to be a much tighter contest, going to be a lot of fun in a rivalry battle, and Cornerstone has the home field advantage. This one could go down to the wire. Uh, nonetheless, a rivalry battle that you probably will not want to miss if you're a fan of either of those teams. Beyond that, we've got the Evangel Lightning in a very interesting game uh, this Friday night as they're going to take on the Evangel Montgomery out of Montgomery, and it's 
going to be a confusing night. Going to be a lot of evangels said uh, in this battle, but the Lightning used to playing eight-man football have kind of reigned supreme in the state at the eight-man level, uh, winning national championships the last several years, and now they're taking on an AISA team that uh, has been traditionally good at the 11-man level, but now this year a new region in the AISA, an eight-man level of football in the AISA this season, and Evangel Montgomery decided to jump down and play in that level uh, for this season. So you've got the newcomers versus the top dog in the state usually in eight-man football, and Evangel already off to a fast start, 2-0 and on the season, uh, and has played extremely well on the offensive side of the ball. Week one, 65 to 13. Week two, 55 to nothing. So not only is the offense playing well, the defense is playing extremely well also. And this is a team last year, the offense was good, but this year expected to be dynamic with everything they had back. And they've proven that on the football field so far this season. This will be Evangel Montgomery's first game of the year. So Evangel, the Lightning out of Alabaster, sitting at 2-0 and already with some confidence Expect that to be key uh, as Evangel Montgomery looks to get some confidence and kind of find their way through uh, and feel their way through uh, an eight-man game for the first time uh, as an AISA eight-man region team. So going to be an interesting fight to see who can come out on top, uh, traditional power at the 11-man level in the AISA or the traditional eight-man power in the ACSC the Evangel Lightning. Going to be a fun battle there as this one takes place uh, on the road for the Lightning for the first time this season. Well, now it's time to talk about our SCR Stars of the Week. The segment returns my favorite segment every season as we get to highlight the top playmakers from this past week of the high school football season. We'll carry that out throughout the entire season. We always want to make sure to recognize all the hard work and effort. And we can't mention everybody, uh, but there were several teams uh, where everybody on the field made a difference. And that's always fun to see. Uh, but we do have to mention a lot of the guys that really stood out uh, and what they were able to do in helping their team uh, succeed in week one of the high school football season. We start at Spain Park High School, the Spain Park Calera game, both sides of the football, both of those defenses, SCR stars of the week right out of the gate. Uh, those two defenses are going to be a force to be reckoned with throughout the season, make both of them playoff contenders and arguably a chance to compete for region championships, just judging by what we've seen from other opponents they're going to play in region play this season as well. So those two defenses deserve their kudos. A lot of guys on both sides of the ball, but particularly up front on the defensive line. Uh, I mean, it was just incredible to see the amount uh, of pressure in the backfield, no space for running backs to get loose. The passing game couldn't really ever develop because of that. So Spain Park and Clear both doing well in that facet of the game. Their defenses uh, definitely deserve kudos in that opener. As for the other athletes on the field, you look at the offensive side of the ball and you have to mention Evan Smallwood for the Jaguars as he threw for 134 yards on 15 of 24 passing and also ran for that game-winning touchdown uh, from seven yards out. And it was just a magical game-winning drive that he led them on uh, to help pick up that win 14 to 10 against Calera. On the other side, the Eagles, they're missing Kobe Prentice this year, but let me tell you, if they can get that offensive line protecting Preston Stokes and find some different plays for Braylon Farrington, he's going to have a dynamite year. Even in a game where their offense was shut down 90% of the time, he went off for 148 yards and a touchdown. A lot of that thanks to the opening play of the game, a quick slant. Preston Stokes hit him, and Print, or, uh, Farrington does the rest, goes 85 yards to the house on the first play of the season. Not a surprise to me at all with the speed he possesses as one of the fastest uh, athletes in the state and also uh, a national track person as well. Expect a big season from him as this offense gets even more dynamic, more confidence, more players step up. He's going to be extremely dangerous and one you have to watch and one that really deserves a lot more when it comes to college offers as well. He's a player I'm extremely high on and I think makes some big-time plays throughout the rest of the season. Moving on beyond that, the Helena Huskies start with a strong game as they take on 
Uh, the Chelsea Hornets pick up a 28-6 to win, and Jordan Washington right out of the gate. We expected him to have a big season coming off knee surgery in the offseason, so wasn't sure what he was going to be able to do from a confidence standpoint. But he said after that game, he was back to his old self, ran for 123 yards and two touchdowns to lead the Huskies to that 28-6 to victory against Chelsea, scored their first two touchdowns of the season, also had an 85-yard kickoff return uh, back inside the 10-yard line that set up that first score. So just an all-around great game from Jordan Washington uh, as the Helena running back. Continuing with that running trend, the Oak Mountain Eagles – Trey Vassell, a big opener as well. He went for 123 yards, or I'm sorry, 117 yards and two touchdowns. So a very similar performance in their opener against Northridge to what Washington had against Chelsea. Uh, You look at what Vassell did well, just a powerful back and scored two touchdowns there for the Eagles as well, as he really was the difference maker on the offensive side of the ball for them in that 23-14 win against Northridge. On the defensive side, however, for the Eagles, also an incredible game and two guys that we expected to step up. They did just that. Garrett Murphy, one of the best athletes in the county, came out, had a a big game, seven total tackles, uh, and also made three extra points as the kicker, punted for a combined 244 yards in that game. Uh, So just able to do just about everything that is needed on the football field, especially between special teams and defense. So a good start to the season from him. And Devin Moss totaled six and a half tackles and one tackle for loss in that win for the Eagles as well. Those two kind of going to be the leaders, but that's a deep defense at Oak Mountain. If they keep their key players healthy, that's going to be a dangerous unit for them uh, and for opponents moving forward throughout the rest of the season. As for the Shelby County Wildcats, several guys to mention there as they lead uh, Shelby County to a 14-7 win against West Blockton in the opener. Carter Sheehan, Devin Alexander, and Ryan Sipes, who I've all mentioned, they all combined early in the season, a couple young guys there, one senior in in Sheehan, to help make that game special on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, They threw for 90-plus, ran uh, for 40-plus, had a couple of touchdowns, so Uh, it's not going to wow you in the numbers that were put up, but for as young as this team is, for them to come out and set that physical tone was huge. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Bradley Horton had eight tackles, a leading returning tackler this year, and Dominique Woods totaled five tackles in that win as well. Going down to talk about the Vincent Yellow Jackets and what they were able to do, we mentioned Jamari Lawson earlier and how he was the light bulb for the offense running the football last year. Well, guess what? They ran for 200-plus in the opener this year without him as he graduated, and Keatlin Pelmer ran for 102 of those yards with two touchdowns for Vincent. So to see that this early in the season is a huge bonus for this team moving forward. And Blake Ollams, the returning quarterback, Threw for 128 yards and three touchdowns in that win as well. So Vincent sitting in good shape there on the offensive side of the football. Expect that to continue to be a trend throughout the season this year. Same for Zeke Adams at Cornerstone. Have to mention him as well. Uh, These stats just absolutely ridiculous. 11 tackles, three interceptions defensively. Also had 269 passing yards, 83 rushing yards, and five touchdowns on the offensive side of the football as well. So a lights out performance from him on both sides of the football. They're going to need him to continue to replicate those numbers throughout the season. Also have to mention, we just talked about 11 tackles on the defensive side for Zeke Adams. Well, Zach Wright over at Vincent, 17 tackles in the opener for the Vincent Yellow Jackets, the leading tackler back for the Yellow Jackets. One of the best defensive performances of the week. Expect his name to be on the list a lot as an SCR star of the week throughout the rest of the season because he's likely going to have double-digit tackles most weeks the rest of the way. That does it for SCR Stars of the Week. Congrats to each of you. I expect to say several of these names throughout the season multiple times and also to add to this list as we move forward throughout the season. going to be a lot of fun to highlight all the talent across Shelby County. Well, that does it for the first week of the Shelby County High School football show for the 2022 season. As always, we're going to try to bring you this show every week of the year. As you've probably heard by now, there's been a little bit of change in my position. I'll be taking over as general manager at Shelby County Newspapers. Lauren Sexton is our new sports reporter, uh, but I still plan to do this portion of the job for a while. We'll see if that continues throughout the season. Obviously, this is what I love to do. This is my favorite part of the daily job, so I'm sure y'all won't get rid of me 
too easily, but it's been a lot of fun. I can't believe we're back in the thick of things one more week before region play kicks off, and it's going to be a fantastic time this Friday night and obviously right here behind me on this field at Warrior Stadium on Saturday night on national television. Just It's so much fun. It's hard to believe it's back and we've got all this excitement already. I expect that to be the trend throughout the year, so make sure you stay tuned throughout this season for all of our coverage at the Shelby County Reporter, uh, but just what these kids and what these coaches are doing on a daily basis to put in so much hard work. Make sure you get out and support them throughout this season. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I will see you all this Friday night. Oak Mountain Pelham is where I'll be out at Herdmont Stadium. We'll have Facebook Live for that one with a pregame show a little earlier than we did last week, hopefully around 530. And then Saturday night, right back here at Warrior Stadium for our Game of the Week. <laughs>